In today's health and well-being, new developments in hip resurfacing and hip replacements. Dr. Tom Gross is with Midlands Orthopedics. And first of all, congratulations. You just went down to Australia recently for an honor for your work with resurfacing and, and doing hip replacements. So, sure. so it gives you a little credit being here. Thank you. <laughs> but I want to ask you about this resurfacing because a lot of times, first of all, I did not realize how prevalent it is. How many people are having to have this? But you like 350,000 well, a in, year? Well, in the United States, a total hip replacement. That includes standard hip replacement and resurfacing. About 300, 350,000 people. And your choice is to do resurfacing first before having to actually do a hip replacement. Why is that? Right. Well, it's, it's really targeted at a younger patient population. Those who are typically, we think of the baby boomers, p younger people who have been very athletic and are crippled by a bad hip and can't be athletic anymore. For them, hip resurfacing is the operation that allows them to return to full athletic activity where a total hip replacement doesn't allow you to, to recover to that level. So show us what the show and tell that you brought in. Hip resurfacing involves what? Resurfacing is where you, where you just take off the surface layer of cartilage and bone of both the femoral ball and the socket and replace them with a metal I'm surface. I'm going to hold this socket for you. So these okay. are both damaged over time, wear and tear, that sort okay. of thing. And, and so you, you smooth that out? Well, the, the red portion indicates where the cartilage is worn through. And when the hip moves and there's a portion of cartilage that's, that's, rem that's gone, then the bone rubs on the bone and it's painful because the nerve endings are exposed in the bone. When we talk about metal on metal, which is the main thing you do, I know there's a lot of controversy with that because people worry about metal getting into the bloodstream. Right. And, and any, any kind of hip replacement, there's, there's, uh, it's an art, these are artificial parts to replace your cartilage surface. And those artificial parts have to be released into your body and your body has to tolerate them. Mm -hmm. And with all the modern implants, that works very well. They, have, they put off very small amounts of particles and the body tolerates them well. In some situations, there's runaway wear. There's a large amount of wear and that can cause problems and, and lead to a revision surgery. And that's been, been um, uh, uh, spoken about a lot in the media lately and in orthopedic journals and so forth. It happens very rarely with metal bearings if it's primarily, if they're badly designed or if the components are malpositioned. And that's really what we, what we uh, did in our, highlighted in our study, um, uh, which I presented in Australia. We've really uh, figured out accurately how to place these components to avoid that problem. It's really a, a small problem to put it in perspective. About 1% of patients over 10 years will develop it, but it's only those with the smaller size bearings and then the implants are not placed ideally. Especially when you consider the benefit that you have. If you would like to talk to Dr. Gross, all you have to do is go to our website, wistv.com slash 4 p.m. Dr. Gross will be here until 4.30 taking your questions. Just log on and ask him a question uh, right away. Thank you, Dr. Gross, so much. Thank so